we are talking about walking the worthy walk and walking as family, walking as family the way God intends for us to walk. And in looking at this particular passage of scripture this morning, we're going to talk about when sin invades the family. When sin invades the family. We live in the city of Detroit, known for being a city that has a high rate of crime. Now, I am not hating on my city because I do believe that often the headlines that they put out would make you think that everywhere you step and everywhere you turn, there are bullets flying and thieves on the loose. Uh, however, having said that, uh, I do say that there is an unacceptable amount of crime that is on our streets. And one crime that in particular is frightening for many is what they call home invasion. It is when folk break into your home. Sometimes you're not there, sometimes you are there, but... Home invasion really is when a person who doesn't have the rights uh, comes into your house to take your stuff. Uh, many of us, because of the fear of having our homes invaded, we have taken action and we have put alarm systems on our house. We've got uh, uh, doors and windows that are monitored and we've gotten sophisticated now and we've put cameras everywhere so that we can try to see when the thief tries to come and invade our home. Some of us have bars on our doors, reinforced doors that can easily be kicked in, all in an effort to keep the thief out of our home. Some of us, uh, we know that all of those things are good, but that determination folk can still get in, so we got something else waiting for a thief. Sometimes it's 12 gates, sometimes it's a uh, clock, sometimes uh, it, it, it's some, something else, but we got something. It could be a baseball bat behind the door because we want to keep the thief out. And listen, I'm not hating on you uh, because uh, whatever you can do to protect your family, that's really between you and God, but I will say this, if God ain't watching your house, all the other stuff is in vain. Uh, but uh, uh, invariably, brothers and sisters, uh, I don't care how many alarms you have, how many shotguns or handguns or, or bars you have on your windows or reinforced door, there is a home invader that can get into your house in spite of all of those things. And uh, that invader is Satan, and he's trying to make sure that he can get you and I to sin. Uh, uh, sin, when it gets in your house, it can cause much more harm than any thief ever has. You see, when sin invades, uh, uh, it can take much more than the television. Uh, it can take much more than your jewelry. It can take much more than your money. I can get a new TV. I, I, I can buy a new computer. I can put some new jewels on my wife's finger and around her neck. But when uh, sin invades, uh, he can rob your house of stuff that you often can't get back. And so I would encourage each of you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for that home invader, Satan, and sin. When I read the newspapers and watch what's happening across this country in our families, I am distressed. I am uh, uh, I, I, I'm sad, but I'm not surprised because we have left the pattern that God has set for the family. We don't start our families right, and even if we don't start right, when you don't start right and find out it's wrong, we don't get our families right, and we're left to our own devices. Uh, just the other day, I'm sure most of you heard the story out of of uh, 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 suburban Atlanta, where uh, 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 a young man took his 22-month-old son and put him in the car seat uh, and left the boy in the car to die. And it appears, by all accounts, it appears that he did it on purpose. Uh, 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 
a young man who was so troubled and so distressed and so out of his mind that while his boy was in the car, now he's online exchanging nude photographs with women who were not his wife. I'm talking about when sin gets in your house. And don't act like sin can't make you do some crazy stuff. Some of us are looking at stuff that we ought not on our computers and on our cell phone. Don't think that the same spirit that was in that man won't be in you when you view things that are not godly, not edifying, not pure, not holy. These seeds to get rid of that son were probably birthed out of the fact that the man wanted to be free of his responsibility to act on his sexual impulse. Then we hear the story of another troubled young man down in suburban Houston. Notice suburban Atlanta. In suburban, you can't move from sea. I know sometimes you think that if I could just get away from my circumstance, if I could just get away into a better environment. Listen, I don't care where you go. Sin is there because you are there. Listen, listen, in suburban Houston, this young man uh, and his wife were estranged. And it's funny how you can love somebody enough to marry them and then go look to do them some harm. He, he, he was looking for his wife over his sister-in-law's house. And in an effort to try and find her, he assassinates six people. Listen, did harm to his mother. Did harm to his wife and assassinated him on his way trying to find his wife to kill her and the kids. When I say that sin can invade your house, sin can invade your heart, sin can invade your family, and when sin invades, sin seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. And so, brothers and sisters, we have a problem on our hands. And what the message is today, in the first family, we find that sin invaded Adam in Eve's house. And sin caused great distress in Adam's house and everybody else's house since Adam. When sin invades your household, we have left God's commandments. We have forsaken God's principles and we are left to deal with the consequences of our sin. Look at the text, if you will. We've already gone through the first part of the text. We see where the serpent cunning, the serpent beautiful, the serpent guiling, the serpent slick, the serpent with his fast talk and his smooth tongue seduced Eve to do what God told her not to do. And I want you to know that Satan will not come and say, listen, uh, you're going to disobey God and you're going to catch all the consequences. No, Satan is telling you, you should try this. This will make you feel good. This will make you look good. This will make you be good. This is good for you. This is good to you. And all the while, he's peddling death. He's worse than the neighborhood dope dealer. By now, all of us know that dope ain't no good. And when you go and smoke or shoot or snort your dope, you already know that you are liable to die. But Satan in his seductive way, not only in terms of dope, but in every bad decision you can make, whether it's to be unfaithful to your spouse, whether it's to spend money unwisely, whether it's to make a decision that will put you and your family in harm, Satan will seduce you and say, it's all right. There's an upside to what you're going to do. And God is just trying to withhold from you. So he seduced Eve, and Eve and says, she looked. Yeah. The fruit was good, and she saw it was good for food. And she said, oh, I can be wise like God. He played with her pride. He, he played with her flesh. He uses the eye. Listen, the eye can get you in trouble, can't it? Uh, don't, 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 don't look too long at some stuff. Because if you look too long, it'll start invading your mind. And when sin invades your mind, 
you act, the Bible says sin brings forth death. Eve looked too long. It was pleasant to the eyes and it, it was good for food. It's gonna, it's gonna make me content and it's gonna make me wise like God. That's some of us. We, we got pride. Pride is the silent killer of most of our lives. It's, in, it's just one of the biggest problems in most of our churches. You know, you hear somebody preaching on. Oh, uh, if I was preaching, I, I, I'd say this. I, I'd do that. If I was singing that solo, I, I'd hit a different note. Listen to that note she hit. If, 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 if I was praying that prayer, I'd pray and, and make everybody get happy. You know, that's what we do. Pride. That, that folk will sit right in the midst of a worship and pride will be all in a. Thank you, Jesus. Pride will be all in that's what happened to Eve. You'll be like God. It said she ate and she gave to her husband. And this is what I want to get over to you. When sin invades your house, listen, we let stuff go and say, oh, you know, it's all right. You know, we all make mistakes and, you know, every, nobody's perfect and we only human. If we let sin just trickle in like, well, you know, maybe tomorrow. Listen, <laughs> look at the text, it says that Eve took a piece of fruit and ate it. Now, in my mind when I was young, I said to myself, what's wrong with that? And, you know, it's just a piece of fruit. And, you know, she, it ain't like she went and stole somebody else's tree. And it's not like she went and cut somebody out or pulled a knife on them and, and took what they a tree and she ate some fruit. Hadn't Satan ever told you it ain't that bad? It, it, you know, it, it ain't like you're doing this and that. Listen, this is the problem, folks. When God says don't, when you do, that's bad. Whenever God says do and you don't, that's bad. It doesn't matter what you think about it. It matters what God says about it. And the problem in our family, we're not doing what God told us to do. We're running family on what I think. And what he thought got her in trouble. It was just a bite. She took the fruit, ate it, and gave it to her husband who was with her. Shame on us when we let Eve take us out of God's will to please her. I don't know how Eve looked, but I've got to believe in my mind that Eve was fine. And I've got to believe that when Eve looked at Adam and handed him that fruit, Adam looked into her eyes and said, ooh. And Adam took, he, he, he should have stopped right there and said, wait, baby, listen, listen, listen. God said, what is this you've done? God has said, he, he should have been keeping tab. Now, some of y'all going to get all mad at me now. But he should have been keeping tab when she was looking at the tree. When she was talking to the snake. But a lot of us are letting Satan have dialogue with our wives and our children. And mother, sometimes you are letting your husband and your children have dialogue with Satan. Listen, pull your husband by the coattail and say, baby, Amen. what did God say? It says that Adam ate. And soon as Adam ate, it said their eyes became, you can follow me in the text, I'm in the text. Their eyes became open. And they knew that they would. Listen, when you sin, there are consequences. It said immediately. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I want you to know, sometimes we think we done got away with stuff. Go ahead, that lie we told. Go ahead. Go ahead. That little money we spent we shouldn't have. Uh -huh. At the time you sin, the damage is already done. Because sin has... Not only immediate consequence, it has ongoing consequence. Listen, I've been saved a long time. Since 1983, I laid my burden down. Now, I called on God when I was 12, but I'm glad I didn't die between 12 and 23. 
23. When I was 23, I was shown up, born again, right? And from that time, listen, God done blessed me. God done used me. God done took care of me and brought me, as you said, all the way. But guess what? I still suffer from some of the consequences of my sin. Oh, I'm forgiven. Oh, I don't have to pay the penalty, but I do suffer the consequence. In our homes, we got to understand if I step out, although I might be forgiven by my wife, there will be some consequence. Listen, Adam, he left his place in the home. I know we got a problem with the idea of headship, but you got to stick with me when we get back to Ephesians because I'm going to tell you what headship really means. He gave headship to Adam, and it was when Adam left his headship and ate that fruit knowing better that immediately their eyes were open and the text says once Adam ate they knew that they were naked. Listen, their nakedness was not a sin. Their nakedness was a part of the intimacy that God had given them but when they sinned, all of a sudden, that which God made good, that which God made perfect, and that which God made and formed in his own image and his own likeness, all of a sudden, it became something perverted, something that was different than what God made. All of a sudden, their nakedness became shame. All right, sir. Yes, sir. Sin will make you shame. And it says that they knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made for themselves coverings. I told you about the coverings last week. They took some leaves and they sewed them together and they covered their loins. But the covering was inadequate. I know sometimes we try to cover up our sins, but your covering, brother, and sister. when you try to cover your tracks and, and, and put the money back in the account, when you try to cover your tracks and delete those uh, sex messages off your phone, when you try to cover your tracks from those websites you've been going to, listen, it's already too late. Because there's something about what God knows that you can't erase. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. You may get away from your wife or you may fool your kids, but you'll never fool God. It says they made coverings and then they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the cool of the day. There was a time when Adam and Eve in the fellowship of their marriage, when they heard God walking in the cool of the day, they would run and commune with God and walk with God and talk with God. But now they heard God in the garden and it said they ran and hid themselves. Satan wants nothing more than you and your family out of connection with God. He wants nothing more than for you not to be in Sunday school, than you not to be in Bible study, than you not to be in worship. He doesn't want you to have family and secret devotions. He doesn't want you to have a prayer life. He doesn't want you to read your Bible every day. He's trying to disconnect us from God, and he's done a great job. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've got all of our electronics. I, I watch my kid every time a little buzz, every time a little flicker, every time a little light. They got to see what's on the, the, the little screen. Uh, you know, they walk around and, and, and if they leave it somewhere, it's like, oh, oh, I, you know, I, I, I don't know what to do. And listen, it ain't just my kids. And yet, we can't give God two or three minutes in the morning to say thank you, Lord. We can't give God a little bit of time to commune with Him by ourselves. No cell phone, no television, no iPad, no iPod. Just take your Bible and your knee pads and get some time with God. But what we've done, because sin has invaded our home, instead of running to God, we're busy running from God. Because sin. Some say, well, I ain't here, nothing, Pastor. I, I ain't here. You know, I ain't been drunk a long time. I ain't been high. I, 
Now they're doing everything. Listen, sometimes our sin is just stagnation. Sometimes we're not keeping it fresh with God. You know, we, we done got lazy and we haven't sought God like we ought to. Listen, when Pastor Lowe got finished with us on Friday, I was near in tears saying, Lord, I repent because I've left my first love and my, my passion and I'm not getting up as early as I used to and I'm not investing the time that God wants. I said, God, I'm smart. I got to come back. I, I can't hide behind I'm too busy anymore. I can't hide behind no flimsy excuses. I can't hide behind I ain't got enough time. I've got to get up and say, God, I'm sorry. But we, we busy hiding from God. We hide behind our job. We, we hide behind our physical ailments. We, we hide behind this and that. Listen, God said, you hide. And when he came, it said, they both hid themselves among the trees of the garden. Listen, they were in home. You know how you do when the folk come to the door trying to collect the people. We hide, but it said the Lord God called to Adam. Listen, isn't it interesting? The earth is a pretty big place. But remember, God made Eden, right? And it said Adam and Eve hid themselves, but God knew just where to walk. And it said God called out to Adam. Brothers, I want you to understand. When it comes to giving an account of what goes on in our houses, God's calling out to Adam. Right. Where are you? I heard your voice, Lord. And I was afraid because I was naked. Now notice Adam deflects. He doesn't say, I heard your voice and I was afraid because I sinned. He said, I'm afraid because I'm naked. See, we, we start looking at the symptoms Instead of the cause. We, we talk about, I can't say Lord because I'm broke. Maybe you broke because you ain't been given right to God. You, you know, I, I, I would say the Lord, but I ain't got no clothes. Well, you, you, you got some clothes for the club? Got clothes for work? Not understanding that the clothing God looking for the heart. Come in the clothes that God gave you. And then if you need some better ones, you, you can get them. But we hide behind the symptoms. Lord, I was naked, so I hid. But I love God. God said, I ain't going to fool with that, that nonsensical message. Did, did, you, did you eat from the tree? Did you eat the fruit that I told you not to eat? God already knows what you did. So why are we scared to go to God? That's amazing to me. We scared to go to God. God already knows what we did. Adam avoids, he, we got this idea of avoidance, right? He asked Adam, did you eat? This is what he said, the woman you gave me. She gave me the fruit and I ate. The answer was, yes, Lord, I ate. But what he did was he deflected a little bit of the plan. Instead of saying, yep, I messed up, I, I let my wife get out of hand, I got out of hand, I'm out of, my house is met, Lord, I'm sorry. He said, Lord, that woman, and notice he tried to even give God a little black, the woman you gave me. Isn't Satan slick? We go around, listen, how is it that we have divorce courts that are busier than the marriage uh, magistrate? It's because Satan is saying yeah. he did it and she did it and we, we point at each other. Yeah. Yes, Instead of looking at it and saying, you know what, sin and got in our marriage, sin and got in our home. Let's go to God, baby. Let's go to God, honey. Let's go to God. God can make it right. God can forgive. God can restore. God can renew. But we busy point. The woman you gave. Now remember, this is the woman, bone in my bone, flesh in my flesh. Ooh, come here. This is my woman, right? Now, that woman, you gave me. And notice that God didn't even address that nonsense. He didn't say, now Adam, I gave her to you, but you were in charge. I gave her to you, and I put you in charge. Where were you, Adam, when she was there? He didn't even go there yet. He just said, oh, you going to play with a woman? Let me ask Eve. Eve was like, look, listen, the serpent deceived me. And listen, she told the truth. And sometimes we think telling 
the truth is all we need to do. And I tell my kids, listen, yes, you need to tell the truth. Don't get me wrong. Tell the truth. The truth might make it a little better, but you still won't suffer some consequence. But I'd rather get the consequence of telling the truth and confessing than adding a lie on to the sin I already The serpent deceived. Notice Eve already knew. Look, look at, look at. Eve already knew I was tricked. Most of us, before the time we do what we didn't did, we ooh, tricked, duped, bamboozled, snuckered. And then that bad feeling, and Satan said back, I got you again. Oh, I got you again. Oh, I got you again. And I remember Satan used to get my door. Got you again. Got you again. Got you again. But I thank God that he ain't got me no more. Right. Right. Adam and Eve sitting there giving me the, uh, this, this, this serpent, he deceived me and I ate. And then God started dishing out punishment. This is what I want you to when sin invades your house, there will be consequences. Now, I'm just going to breeze through what he did for Satan. Listen, he told the snake, snake you, let Satan come into your body and I'm going to curse the physical snake. Snake slither on the ground. To this day, they eat dust, so to speak. For, for the rest of eternity, until God destroys all animal kind, now, the snake will be crawling on its belly. But he gives an interesting punishment to the snake. It says that he will bruise your head, the seed of a woman. He's going to put enmity. There's going to be animus. There's going to be adversarial relationship between Satan and man or Satan and God. Because it says the seed of the woman, capital S. I'll get there at the end. And it says he, capital H, shall bruise your head. And when you cut a snake, when you got to kill a snake, what you, what you got to do? You can't cut his tail. You got to crush his head. Oh, somebody already with me. But it says now the snake would bruise his heel. And he said to the man, uh, to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception in pain. You shall bring forth children. Every woman in here can probably testify that labor ain't no joke. Childbirth was not meant to have that kind of physical pain. But when Eve sinned, a part of the constant reminder of that sin is the pain in childbirth. And by the way, the pain isn't only the labor pains, it's the raising pains. Because I know we got little angels, I know we got little innocent, lovely ones, but they're born sinners. God said that he multiplied greatly your sorrow and your pain. You will bring forth children. And then it says your desire will be toward your husband. In primary Bible study class when I read that, I was like, that ain't a curse. That's good. Because I want my wife to desire me. I want her. But uh, the curse thing was that she will look at your role and your authority and she'll walk that spot just like Eve did in the garden. There is an innate something in you that is a part of the curse that says, you know what? I'm in charge. I'm just as much of a... I, I got my degree. I, I, I earn just as much. I, I'm just as smart as who does he think he is? Ladies, and listen, don't get mad. That's, that's a part of the curse. But Jesus came to break the curse, right? And if you will desire, and, and listen, and the Bible said a part of the curse is he will rule over you. Every once in a while you wonder, what's wrong with that man? Who does he think he, he can't make me? And the reason he's trying to make you, because that's a part of the curse that God gave, that sometimes men will overstep their mouths. 
Brothers, I know we think that pulling up our pants and talking about who we are, that's something. And sometimes we, we get a little angry and loud and, 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 and some men go as far as to raise their hand at their wife. That cursed and messed you up. He shall rule. Listen, God never gave man to rule over Eve. He gave Eve to rule with Adam. You read the text. He gave him headship. He was always still head, but she was there to co-rule with him. And now he's, because of the curse, trying to rule over. So you've got feminism and chauvinism right there in the text. Let me finish this thing up. We're going to talk some more in Bible study. He told Adam, because you heeded the voice of your wife. Listen, notice that he punished Adam not for eating the fruit. He punished Adam for heeding the voice of his wife and not heeding his voice. Somebody better listen good. It wasn't saying that Eve's voice is not important. It's saying when she goes against the voice of God, you got to tell Eve, be quiet. Notice I didn't say shut up. I said, Eve, be quiet. He said, cursed is the ground for your sake. I made Eden beautiful. I made the earth great. But because of your sake, cursed is the ground. You wonder why the earth is spiraling out of control. The curse is still in effect. In toil, you will eat of it. Listen, when Adam first used to work, do you remember that to whistle while you work? Adam used to whistle while he worked. Now Adam's doing this. Adam's doing this. You're wondering why. That, listen, Monday mornings, there are more heart attacks. There are more men who die from heart attacks on Monday morning than any other day of the week. Because he's thinking about, I got to go back to work. Listen, work is good, work is healthy, work is vital, but there is sweat and toil and anguish and frustration in work. You are not yielding as much as you ought to in work. You're not getting as much satisfaction because the curse said you will toil, you will work hard all the days of your life. You thought 65 was retirement, didn't you? It said both thorns and thistles shall it bring forth. You wonder why you can't enjoy everything the way it ought to be because thorns and thistles are there and you shall eat the herb of the field and the uh, sweat of your face, you shall eat bread. You have to work hard until you return to the ground. By the way, man wasn't initially made to return to the ground. A part of the curse is this body's got to die. That's why God took the other tree of life and took it. He said, if you eat that one, listen, he'll be a sinner and live forever. And that's a bad situation to be a sinner and live forever. Listen, uh, uh, I don't want to be a sinner and live forever. He said God took that tree up. Or before he took it up, he said he put a cherubim and he kicked Adam out of his house. Sin will evict you from your home. Listen, God gave him another house, but they had to rebuild the home. Listen, sin will rob you of your home and you still living in the house you were there. Remember that house y'all bought together and furnished together and painted together and decorated together, carpeted the floors together. Everything looks so nice and lovely. Now all of a sudden, you're in the same house, but it's no longer a home because sin has robbed us. But look at God. God looked at Adam and Eve. He saw them. Imagine Adam and Eve standing before God in those fig leaves, those inadequate cover. They just got the verdict. They just got the punishment. And I got to believe they looked at Eden and like the lush gardens, the, the beautiful ponds, the beautiful flowers and the, the trees and the, the animals. It was beautiful. And God locked them up. And some of us right now are standing outside of the place where God wants us to be. Locked out of the blessing. Locked out of the joy, the peace, the love that God wanted for. And we're standing there looking. And God said, nope, you can't get back in. Not with those clothes. It 
said that God took one of the animals. I knew Adam had named him. Adam knew the animal. Innocent old animal. Animal that probably loved. Adam knew him. Adam, I don't know what kind of relationship they had, but you know I got a little cat. I never was a cat guy, but this cat, now I love this little cat because there's something about this little animal and God took one of them little animals that Adam must have loved and he slew him and made covering that was more suitable for Adam and Eve. Sometimes your covering, God got to remove it and God has to put a covering and for Adam and Eve it was a temporary covering. But my Bible says that there was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. My Bible tells me that there was one who came who was the perfect sacrifice. My Bible tells me that when God saw that his world was going to be in sin, before he even made the world, before the foundation of the world, there was a lamb already slain. That animal's temporary covering just let Adam know that blood had to be shed, not because of anything that animal had done, that innocent animal, but the blood was shed to cover the man's sinfulness, his nakedness, and I thank God that he didn't slay a pig, he didn't slay a cow, he didn't slay a turtle dove, but he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary's cross for your sin and for my sin, and when you take on the covering and the forgiveness of the blood of Jesus Christ, you can restore your Eden, you can restore your home, you can restore your marriage, you can restore your life, but you first got to restore your own heart and let God put a new heart in you. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew within me a right spirit. Help me to be the right kind of husband. Help me to be the right kind of wife. Help me to be the right kind of child. Help me, God, to get right with you, to get right with my spouse, to get right with my children, to get right with my neighbors, to get right with my church, to get right with everybody who I need to be right with and help me, oh God. To return. It said, give me back the joy of my salvation. The joy of my marriage. The joy in my house. Give me back my home, oh God. When sin invades, you call the police department when they're the invader in your house. But when sin invades your house, you call on God. Listen, I know the response time in Detroit is over an hour or so, and they might not ever come. But I guarantee you, when you call on God, when sin and they, he'll be right there. I'm so glad that we've got a Savior who says, I understand what you're going through. No, I may not have been married, but I know what it's like to be tempted. I know what it's like to suffer. I know what it's like to go through. Uh, yet I was without sin. I'm here to show you that you can make it with God. If you are here today, I want you to know that no matter what state you are in personally, no matter what state your family is in, you can get right with God. The Lord has made a way. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, the seed of a woman. Everybody in here, if you had biology 101, you know that the man is the one who has the seed. God gave man the sperm, but God said it was the seed of a woman because he bypassed man in order to bring us the God-man, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit was the one who provided the seed into Mary so that Mary can have a baby called Jesus if you're here today, that same Jesus who died, he died for you and me. Every person needs a God. Every person needs a Savior. Every family needs a God. Every family needs a Savior. Every person needs a church. Every family needs a church. We all need God. We are not hide any longer. Is there someone today 